probably noticed as soon as you add the word Amiga to GoTech, the price suddenly doubles. Rather than buying an ugly, modern, external floppy drive enclosure, but a GoTech in, I want to do something a little differently. The solution is to use an original external floppy drive enclosure from either the 80s or 90s. So the advantage of using an original enclosure is that you get the D-Type 23 pin, which are very difficult to get hold of today. You also will get the pass-through on the back of the drive. The other advantage is you will get the drive enable disable on the back. These are features that rarely come with the new external enclosures, which usually have a horrible ribbon cable, a hacked down 25 pin D-Type, and no pass-through or way of turning the drive off without disconnecting it. The enclosure I've chosen is a Kumana 3.5 inch floppy drive. Kumana were big in education. All the floppy drives in my high school from either the 80s or 90s were Kumana, and they made external drives for the Amiga. And I've already converted one of these drives, and you may have seen it in my previous videos. But I want one to stay with the Amiga 2000, while having one I can use on the bench and with my other Amigas. It is possible to pick up something like this, which is a, a GoTech with this seven segment display. Nothing fancy, pretty bog standard firmware and designed to either go in something industrial or a keyboard or sampler. The word Amiga is never mentioned in the description of these. The upgrades we're going to do to this are replace the seven segment display with an OLED display. The OLED screens are available in a few sizes. What you want to go for is the oblong one, which is the 0.91 inch display, and add a rotary encoder. The rotary encoder is a relatively simple analog device. It's basically a little switch you can turn and click. We don't really care about the firmware that's on it because we're going to install the latest version of Flash Floppy. As far as the Amiga goes, if you're on Kickstart 2.4 or higher, if you've got an external drive connected and there's a disk in it, it will boot from that disk. However, that's not the case on Kickstart 1.3, where you're going to need some sort of hardware device to switch the signals between DFO and DF1. And that sort of hardware manipulation is beyond the scope of this video, but there's plenty of information about doing that on the internet and on YouTube. So we're going to start today's build. We have two GoTex to modify. These are the screens I don't need. These are 0.96 OLED displays. First order of business is to get the two boards out. This one's an AT3. And this one is an AT2. I've never converted an AT2 before, so we're going to try this one first. First, we're going to install a jumper in J3. The GoTech floppy emulator is a popular hardware device designed to replace traditional floppy disks in a variety of electronic equipment. Originally developed for a more industrial setting, its primary function is to emulate a floppy disk drive, allowing users to use a USB flash drive for storing the data which is especially useful for devices that rely on increasingly scarce and unreliable floppy disks. To install the header to add the rotary encoder, we need to first remove all the solder. Adding a right angled six pin DuPont header You could just solder the wires directly into the board if you don't have a right angled header. In the early 2000s, initial concepts and development of floppy drive emulation began, aiming to provide a modern solution for devices that still relied on these floppy disks. Now, we're going to do this the hack build restore way. we're going to solder these directly onto the pins of the rotary encoder. 
adding a little flux. That's way too much. If only I had something to hold this in place while I was soldering it. In 2010, GoTech Systems Co. Limited introduced the GoTech floppy emulator to the market. The initial versions were generic and intended to replace a standard 1.44 megabyte floppy drive. By 2012, GoTex were supporting a wide range of equipment. Well, that's uh, good enough for jazz. The other two pins, we're going to have to bend those in slightly to get them the right distance apart to solder on the two pin header. Be very careful if you have to bend these back. It's very easy to snap them off. In early 2013, the Amiga community, always on the lookout for ways to modernize and extend the lifespan of their beloved machines, showed an interest in the GoTek emulator. The Amiga computers dating back to the 1980s and 1990s used floppy disks extensively for operating system boot up, software and games. Initial experiments and discussions began in the Amiga forums and communities about adapting the GoTek emulator for Amiga computers. The main challenge was the Amiga used a unique floppy disk format, not directly compatible with the GoTex initially intended use. We'll also need a little piece of cable about the width of the encoder. You need to strip both ends and tin them. Solder one to one of the pins on the two side, and that's going to go across to the center pin on the three side. This is effectively the ground. Sponsors of this video are PCBWay. They provide PCB prototype fabrication from as little as $5. They also have a huge library of shared projects and if you're not confident with a soldering iron, you can get them to assemble them for you. PCBWay also have CNC machining and 3D printing services. All of this is available at pcbway.com. Thanks PCBWay for sponsoring this video. So now attach one end of the DuPont leads to the rotary encoder. only connecting on the three-way the two outer pins. The two-way is your ground and switch. Before 2013 turned into 2014, custom firmware development had started. Spearheaded by enthusiasts within the Amiga community, the goal was to make the GoTech emulator fully compatible with Amiga's disk format. In 2014, the first custom firmware for the GoTech floppy emulator, especially tailored for the Amiga computer, was released. This firmware allowed the emulation to read and write Amiga floppy disk format, effectively mimicking a real Amiga floppy drive. The outer pins first, the top one's ground, the bottom one is VCC. On the inner side, the bottom one is clock, and the top one is data. That's the I2C connectivity to the OLED display. We now need to make some small modifications to the GoTech case to allow the OLED screen to fit flush to the front of the case. Just cutting down the tab in the top, this is to allow the DuPont connector to get past it so the cables will sit neatly down the side of the GoTek lid.
In 2015, the introduction of custom firmware like Flash Floppy greatly expanded the usability and appeal of the GoTech Floppy emulator within the retro computing community. Ongoing development and updates have added more features such as support for additional formats, improved user interfaces and direct integration with hardware like OLED displays and rotary encoders. And using the little dimple that's already in the front of the case as a marker, careful not to add too much pressure. There's a little tab on some of the rotary encoders that's designed to go into a hole. Unless you want to drill another small hole, you'll need to cut that off. The GoTech floppy emulator combined with custom firmware has become a staple in the retro computing and vintage electronics communities. It is widely used not just by the Amiga enthusiasts, but also fans of other systems such as the Atari ST, vintage PCs, and even electronic music equipment like samplers, keyboards, anything that originally used a floppy disk for data storage. Because we don't know what firmware is on this, I'm just powering it up to see what it does. Nothing. So now we need to get Flash Floppy installed on GoTech. If you go to the GitHub page of Flash Floppy, look in the Releases section, which you'll find on the right hand side. Download the latest zip file for Flash Floppy. Then go back, scroll down, the section about downloading Flash Floppy. Now we're effectively programming it from the start. So placing a jumper over J3. You need to download the drivers and software. You'll need ISP, which is in system programming. Unzip the Artery software, which includes the driver, which you'll need to install before you're able to actually connect to the GoTech drive. Going into the Artery DFU driver install, from the driver install package, And then run the Artery software, which is in the Artery ISP programmer folder. Change the language to English with a little drop down and connect your GoTech drive via a USB A to USB A cable. You need to use USB DFU. It should detect the device. Keep clicking next. Take this opportunity to unzip Flash Floppy because it won't be long before we need the files contained in this zip file. Just click Next and then click on Protection because we're going to effectively entirely wipe this GoTech.
then just click back. Change the selection to download to device. Go to your flash floppy folder. Look in the hex folder. If you've got an AT3 or an AT2, you want the AT415 file. Once you've selected it, just click next. Okay. Remove the jumper and unplug the USB cable. Now when you power it on, we have a display. Adding a USB stick with some files on them. We find the rotary encoder isn't working. Quickly checking and I've actually got to the cables entirely the wrong way around. Quick fix so it's wide up as described earlier in the video. Now the rotary encoder is working beautifully. And with the magic of YouTube, the second drive is also done. Opening up the Kamana, you can remove the floppy drive, transfer the livery to our new GoTech, pop the GoTech in, and we'll need to use DuPont cables and that's male to female to connect all these up straight. You'll need to move the jumper. You only need 18 DuPont cables to connect the whole driver. Note the ones that don't need to be connected. Ground on the second row of pins. Testing the drive in an Amiga 500 Rev6 with Kickstart 2.4 and no internal floppy drive. boots to Amiga test kit, changing it to install 3.2 and we can boot all the way to a workbench and that shows that DFO does not exist and we can see the GoTech. Why not check this video out next? Thanks for watching.